All right, so there are three main types of reliability that we discuss in relationship to research methods. There's test retest reliability, there's inter-rater reliability, and there's internal reliability. Test retest reliability is normally only relevant if you're doing some sort of self-report measure, a questionnaire, an interview. A test retest reliability is if I give you a questionnaire over something that I do not expect to change over time, let's say I'm measuring your level of intelligence, I'm doing an IQ test, and I turn around and I give you that same test a month later. I expect that to stay the same. I expect your scores on those two to be very highly correlated, unless there was some major extenuating circumstance, right? Like you were just coming out of a concussion the day that you took it the first time and you weren't cognitively clear or something. But so the idea of test retest reliability is if I have something that I'm expecting to stay the same, I should see a similar score when I give you those measures. If you have totally different scores, there's something wrong with my inventory, right? If I'm measuring overall life satisfaction and I give you my overall life satisfaction measurement the first week of September, and then I have you take it again the first week of October and your numbers are like this and nothing major has happened in your life, I might need to question, am I really measuring overall life satisfaction or am I maybe measuring current mood, right? If it changed that much. Now, if you had a job loss, a divorce, uh, some other huge life upending circumstance, okay. But just in terms of general, right, that'd be something I would expect to stay the same. So test retest reliability. If I expect it to stay the same over time, then your score on my questionnaire should stay the same over time. And that's how I know that I have that type of reliability well in whatever this questionnaire is that I'm giving to you, right? Um, a very basic example would be like the odometer on a car. I drive my kids to their sports practices three times a week at the same place, right? My house to this gym three times every week. My odometer on my car, if I'm not changing my route or doing something weird, my odometer on my car should say the same number each time I go to the gym and back three times a week. That's test retest reliability. I'm getting the same number on something I expect to be the same number. The next kind is inter-rater reliability. And this is normally relevant to observational research. This is where if I have two or more observers, they're going to come up with consistent or similar findings. So let's go back to the example that we used in the first video um, of this series. If we were observing someone's happiness throughout a day, they're, they're markers of enjoyment based on Ekman's stuff of physical portrayals of human emotion. And I have two different researchers who are following you around and coding your happiness indicators, your enjoyment indicators throughout the day. If one of my researchers documents that you had 37 outward markers of enjoyment throughout the day, and my other researcher writes down 92, I do not have good inter-rater reliability. My two observers did not come up with consistent findings. Now, if one wrote down 32 and one wrote down 35, okay, we can work with that, right? There, there can be a margin of error of a couple of points there. But inter-rater reliability is I'm doing observational research, and I have more than one person observe it to make sure that we're in agreement on, based on this standard, what are we observing, right? Same with the, the example that we used about if I was going to observe um, a conflict among a romantic partner. And let's say that what I was trying to observe was indicators of frustration. And maybe I had this list of we're looking for a raised tone of voice. We're looking for sarcastic comments, personal insults, aggressive body language, leaning forward, clenching fists, things like that. And I had this list of here's your, here's your indicators of frustration I want you to look for as you observe this couple arguing. And one of my researchers, you know, picked up on 42 indicators of frustration. And one of my researchers picked up on three not good inter-rater reliability. So this is, again, observational research, observational research, this is key. 
you never want to have one researcher doing the coding with no form of checking um, because it, it can be hard to establish reliability if you're doing that. And the last type is internal reliability. And this is, are the items on my scale measuring the same construct? If I am proposing that what I'm measuring is your overall life satisfaction, can I go through my questionnaire, my scale, and say, okay, all the items in this questionnaire are measuring the idea of life satisfaction. If there's questions thrown in there about, I don't know, um, if there's questions thrown in there about conflict with extended family, that might not, that might compromise the internal reliability on my study because I might propose there's a correlation between overall life satisfaction and amount of family conflict that exists with your extended family. But it's also true that, you know, a lot of people are compartmental, are good at compartmentalizing. And just because I argue with my sister a lot, that doesn't mean that I don't have good overall levels of life satisfaction. So internal reliability is going through your scale and making sure that all of the items are measuring the same construct that you're intending to measure. And there are actually statistical analyses that you can do for this to check your scales. So those are the three main types of reliability that we talk about in research methods. Test retest reliability, which is important for your self-report measures, um, and also some physiological measures. Interrater reliability, which is important for observational research, um, and can also be important for um, your physiological measures. And then also your internal reliability, which again, we normally also talk about in the context of self-report measures, um, larger questionnaires and things of that nature. So that's reliability. And now we're going to move on to validity.